What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You're watching Dave Beyond TV, where we go beyond that everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day to day basis. And today, I want to kick some, um, just a few concepts for you about um, work, about uh, projects and things of that nature. And basically, okay, we just going to jump right in. And sorry if it's a little loud. I got the heater on and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's freezing this morning. You know what I'm saying? I like the cold, but, you know, still, it's, it's freezing. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, right, I got a shirt off, too. So, like, what the fuck? Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> we going to talk about that. <coughs> So let's jump right in. So let's let, let's talk about it. So the, the um the whole point of this one is just uh you know you should be treating your projects like a ritual, right? Because um when we start to talk about your career, right? So we already know what a career is, but you know for those who don't know, you know your career is almost like your it, what it is is like your status, what you're known for. Your career, um, and basically what you're known for can ultimately become your career or your business and things of that nature so you know when we look at the natal chart and things of that nature we're talking about the 10th house but if you're not into astrology or you just you know you just kind of naturally do what you do your 10th house is whatever you chose as far as something that you would like to be known for it's what you would like to you know basically that 10th house leads into the 11th house right so this is like whatever you're known for can become something that you can offer a service into the public arena AKA the eleventh house and things of that nature. So whatever you project or broadcast in the tenth house, right? Because like you know the tenth house relates to the Capricorn energy, and basically the Capricorn is the is, is like basically the goat. The goat is all about climbing mountains. It's all about building. It's all about construction and things of that nature. But ultimately, it's climbing that mountaintop. And once you're at that mountaintop, that's you broadcasting what you've done. And which in now you can ultimately be seen for that position. You know what I'm saying? Because Capricorn is all about positioning. It's all about reaching a status, reaching a position and maintaining it because it's still Earth. You know, Earth energy is all about maintenance. It's all about stability. It's all about structure and things of that nature. So once you've climbed to the top, then you actually have something to stand on in which you can display your message or relay your message, I should say. So relaying your message goes into that Aquarian energy, which is the 11th house. And so when we're looking at, you know, uh, the, the natal chart for business, it's like the 10th house is your career, your status. But the 11th house is how you'll market that. So when it comes to marketing and things of that nature, you, you really want to focus on the energy in your 11th house and maybe look at the house lords and things of that nature. So you know what energy you can use to basically maximize whatever's going so that you can get your point across very effectively. Rather than, you know, and it's not about what you say. Me, for instance, it's like I have a certain way I know I need to display my message. If I came on here in a, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of y'all might not, it, it, you, you know, put this to test in your own life. It's like, I know me, I know because I know myself and I know my, um you know, beyond just the natal chart, I know myself. I know if I were to present myself in certain energies, it wouldn't come off the right way. You People wouldn't get the message the right way. You know, we're all individuals. We all have our own individual makeup. And see, the 11th house is like about your individual way of communicating. Because ultimately, when you're in the public arena and people don't know you, you know, that's the area of life that's about unfamiliar things, the unknown and things of that nature. But it's also the public arena and it can be social media. But if people don't know you, how you present yourself, basically, um, it has to be your own individual fixated way of communicating because if it's too relatable it's almost like you won't have enough individuality to stand out you won't have enough individuality to make somebody want to be familiar with you if that makes sense you know what i'm saying but um for the most part you know and that's kind of like the 11th house is like you know when you're when you're around, around when we start talking about the third house right gemini energy this is things that you are familiar with so with these familiar people places and things you can afford to just kind of be mutable or kind of relate to other people's way of communicating. You can afford to kind of let that go. You know what I'm saying? And like, honestly, it depends on what energy, because some people got Gemini in the 11th house. So that's the way they have to do their fixated communication energy. But it's still, it's fixated in the sense of this is your unique way of navigating the, the, the social arena, the public arena and things of that nature. But, you know, when we talk about the energy in your third house, these are the people you're familiar with. So ultimately it's like you can afford to kind of be mutable and, and kind of go, go back and forth and things of that nature in the seventh house these are people you're trying to relate to so these are people that you you've chosen 
an initiated conversation with. You've initiated the relationship with. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more about compromise. It's like people you want to relate to. The 11th house, these are people you don't know. These are associates, people at work and things of that nature. You don't know these people. So, it, like, trying to be too relatable can ultimately backfire on you. And trying to be too, um, too wishy-washy and things of that nature, you might... Um, you might slip up and allow some information that, that isn't supposed to be displayed or you might show a side of you that allows them to see a certain, to get a certain idea of you that might not be accurate and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like the principle of the 11th house being fixated in your own way of making sense and your own way of communicating so that in that fixated nature, people know what you're about when they don't know you. That way, they can decide if they want to be associated with you. And basically from that association, they can take you into other places. Hold on. A little too hot. You know what I'm saying? A little too hot. You know what I'm saying? But um, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when we talk about this, like, so I say treat your projects like rituals because your career, like, is, is basically, you know, a lot of people confine their career to a job. That's not... You shouldn't do that. Or, you know, and then, like, that might sound confusing, but they confine their career. Like, your career is, like, first of all, it's, like, let's talk about what your career could be. See, like, w what it really is, like, your career, a lot of people look at life as very linear. Like, very, um, A goes to B, then C. You know what I'm saying? Point A, the point B, the point C. And, you know, I feel like, that's not the case a lot of times. A lot of times, like, you know, if we, depending on what kind of work you do, right? You know, because it's one thing to have a nine to five. You know, a lot of people just get a nine to five to pay the bills, though. Like, when we start talking about your career, this is like, I'm talking more so about something that you are, it's like the internal dream that you're trying to structure and make real. You know what I'm saying? Because we all have dreams and imaginations. It's just some of us don't see the realistic aspects of that or don't see that dream becoming real in this lifetime and things of that nature and like you know some dreams are that big to where they they take more than one lifetime but like here's the thing is like the sooner you get up and try the more it's like you can't close off the idea of all possibilities that's this that's disconnected from god for real when you look at a situation and you say Oh, this is this is too big for me. I can't I can't I can't fathom this coming into my life. So I'm just gonna give up on it. It's like, you know, even if like when we come to our, our imaginations and things like that, you know, so some people got more access to their imagination than others. You know, some people got more ability to believe in things that are not there. You know what I'm saying? Some people got more connections to their own inner feelings. So they they it's almost like they can't not believe in in what they see. Or what they what they they can't not believe in their own imagination and in, in, in their own world and things of that nature. But you know you got to understand that like first of all the the whole idea of all possibilities is the, the the beauty of you know the fact that if you imagined it it can be real. So it makes no sense. It's like you're really just discrediting discrediting yourself or doing yourself a disservice on this in this lifetime. If you look at the things that you imagine, because your imagination, nobody else has that. Your imagination, your, you, you know, no one else has that image in their mind. That's what an imagination is. It's an internal image, a vision. No one has your vision of the world. No one sees the world quite like you do. You might see other people that you can see your world through their eyes, or they might be able to relate to you and see where you're coming from, right? But no one actually be there. When you talk about your dreams, the reason dreams are so, like, we can find certain, depending on, like, where you at, right, mentally and things of that nature and just with your own spirit, you can hear somebody dream and kind of kind of map out what they might have seen, right? But at the end of the day, when someone explains their dream to you or when you explain your dream to somebody, you know damn well they don't know what you're talking about. You know, you know they don't quite, the only thing you can do is come up with a bunch of metaphors and things of that nature to, to somewhat... Give them a mental image, but that mental image in their mind, you 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 have no control over what image they decide to develop. You know, and that goes even with with, with relationships and things of that nature. It's like that's why it makes no sense to care about what other people can, like see in your art. It it doesn't make sense to care what other people think about what you what you present. 
only to the extent though only to the extent of understanding how relatable it is to the to the collective you know what i'm saying like that's that's when it does because we are here to relate we all but we all individuals but we're here to relate and expand but you don't it's no sense in expanding with somebody else that you don't actually agree with you know what i'm saying but for the most part, that, that's why it's like when it comes to your dream and things of that nature, it makes no sense to really sit there and contemplate what other people are going to feel about what you put out. But we all go through that. We all go through that little process where before we release something, we, we got this. Uh, well, at least I know me, I, I, I start to form. Well, I used to form some anxiety and things of that nature, but I, I, I've taught myself and trained myself to just put it out regardless, because at the end of the day, it's like we develop certain thoughts and feelings about the shit that we create that don't even be real. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things I hear that's like, oh, that, that, I don't like that sound. I don't like that. Like when I'm listening to my own music, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know about that. And I'll sit there and overthink a, a verse or overthink a, a pattern, right? I'm making beats now. So I'm overthinking a sample. And I'm like, am I, am I looping that right? Ah, is the drums right? You would drive yourself crazy trying to be perfect in the way you present. And then when, when you do present, people don't even be noticing certain little things and things of that nature. And that's not, that's not to say you should lack um, attention to detail. It's always good to make sure what you're putting out is high quality. But see, there's, you know what I'm saying? There's a time and place for everything, and everything needs to be in moderation. So the time and place, if, if you told yourself you want to release something, release it. If you told you, you know, because if you don't release it and you hold on to it trying to be per perfect, what it does is it does two things to you, right, psychologically. One of them, it, it, it creates more anxiety. And, you know, it's kind of retention in the in the bad way. Retention in the sense of you, it's almost like, a, you know, blue balls, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like a better word, blue balls. It's like you was you had anticipation, you built it up, and then you, you got stopped right, right before you was about to release, right before you was about to bust. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, got, you got stopped. And it's like, you you know what that feeling is like. You know what I'm saying? We grown here. You know what that feeling is like, that build up. Uh, 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 uh. And then it just stopped. It just it just ended like that, anticlimactic. And so what this does internally is that it creates this dissonance between you and and your 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 freedom. Because now it's like you've kind of you you've you 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 stopped yourself. I wanted to say a certain word, but I I ain't gonna say that word. <laughs> that word is weird to me, and I don't even think I'm saying it right. But y'all, yeah, if I don't know, you might know what word I'm talking about. But anyway, it's like it's like you know what I'm saying. This all this anticipation up that led to nothing. You know what I'm saying, and so that that kind of causes an internal frustration. You know, like sexual frustration. It's like this. It's and, and the thing about like you need to release. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to release, and then actually, let me let me jump because I had made notes real quick. Like I, I was just thinking about it. I had made a note about creating your work release schedule, and I said, you know, releasing gives you time to refresh and co recollect for a new project. Marketing is meant to extend this time period. Depending on the rate in which you work, you should adjust accordingly so that you remain consistent and productive without over exhausting yourself. So. The whole idea between a work release schedule is just because you need to, you, everyone needs time to rest, but at the same time, you know the grind. We all trying to, you have to, if you, if you, if you creating a platform for yourself, you have to create that platform and that, that section of what, you know, you have to create that environment for the people who want to see your work. You know, just like this YouTube channel, right? And shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for being here because y'all don't have to. There's so many other things y'all could be watching right now. But y'all chose to click on this video. So I appreciate you for real. Every Man, I tell you, I, I can't even express for real how how deep. You know, all I could do is make instrumentals to show y'all how I feel. The, those instrumentals, the, the beauty in the instrumentals and the beauty in the music, that's really how beautiful I feel inside and how appreciative I am for for life in general and for y'all, you know what I'm saying? For everybody who chooses to click and like, hopefully I heal somebody through through whatever, through my words or through my instrumental, through, through whatever I make, through my videos, you know what I'm saying? But the whole point is to say, you know, because I was like this, look, I've been making music for about seven to eight years, right? Back in 2014, 2013 and things of that nature. That's even when I like start to, to really connect with the soul group or not even connect. I was just watching videos and things of that nature. But I, I, you know, over time, you know, what I've learned is that, you know, in that seven year span, right, 
I, I had the idea, I was like, oh, I want to make music, right, for instance. And so, oh, I want to start my um my company, right, my media company. And I just made, right now I'm going through a rebranding period, you know what I'm saying? I had to, I had to really, this Aquarius season, I really took the time, especially with the retrograde going on, really took the time to kind of revisit my, um, that my media company, uh, my, my media company in, um, yeah, I, I don't want to speak too much on it, but yo, go follow and subscribe to uh, Millview Media Studios on IG and on YouTube. It's just Millview Media and things of that nature. So it's a rebranding period. So no videos right now, but best believe we coming. We on the way. You know what I'm saying? But real shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting back to the the, the point is like you know, going back seven years, right? I was like, oh, I really want to make music, right? So I was in, in my own dorm room making all kinds of, just writing mad music, writing music, trying to teach myself how to make beats, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, it was just me in the mirror with my notepad and a YouTube instrumental, right? Going on and on, right? But here's the thing, right? This is seven years ago. This is before I even touched the studio. This is before I put myself on a stage to be, to present what I was doing, aka my 10th house, right? So everything was basically in the fourth house. It was me expressing things in my own privacy. But the, the thing about doing that is eventually, right, what happens is you might start to get content with your abilities behind closed doors, fourth and eighth house, right? You might start to get comfortable with your abilities behind closed doors in privacy, right? But you eventually what I realized is that that can create a delusion because you get so comfortable expressing yourself privately that when it comes time to present things to the world, you didn't account for people just straight up not liking your vibe or you didn't get a proper understanding of the analytics between you putting your work out there and people responding because see, the funny thing about it is, while we shouldn't give a fuck about what people think, at the same time, it's healthy to get a general consensus of who, who who likes your music and who don't, or who likes your art and who don't. That's a part of life, aka the, the rejection, and the rejection is what builds substance to sustain a position. You don't get to the 10th house by playing it safe. The 10th house is in the wintertime. You done went through hell. You done... You, this, and, and the funny thing is, by the time you get to the 10th house space, that is hell. It, it, that, that's hell in, in general. But, but see, it's, it's actually like, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, constellation-wise, I think, yeah, when we get to, you know, Capricorn, the sun is in, like, you know, it starts to get to that Hades area. I don't know the exact constellation that's like, but I know when we start talking about getting into the Scorpio area, you know what I'm saying? This is like where Hades be at and things of that nature. And so we start getting to the, to the, to the, I mean, we in the winter season, you know what I'm saying? But if you, if you, if you understand astrology, like real astrology, you know that like the sun is where we're looking at, but we're on earth. So where we are actually at is the opposite. So when we're in, when the sun is in Capricorn, we're really in all the constellations in the fourth house where cancer at. So it's like different. It's and and that's why it's kind of like, you know, but I I got to, you know what I'm saying? Like I, my point is just to say, you know, but yeah, that that's another topic. I I got to do I got to do more uh, more meditation and research on that. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I don't want to just speak out the side of my neck and shit like that and be wrong as fuck and niggas like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" and lead people down some wrong shit. But what my point is, but that is real shit though. We are on earth, so you got to understand wherever the sun is at, technically the, our earth sign is opposite to that and on, in the earth sign basically the earth sign the earth sign is all about so where your sun sign at your earth sign is the opposite sign right that's why there's so much importance in opposition because that that balance and that duality and things of that nature that that that's that's like those are the keys the missing keys to your expression that you can incorporate in order to actually grow and become a very a complete version of yourself rather than just a person who's like, I'm just my sun sign, so I'm just going to express myself like that. But you know more than anybody. If you overdo your sun sign, you stumble and fall just like everybody else. But if you actually have a sense of duality and understand your opposite, 
you you understand the certain qualities that you need in order to bring balance into your life. And when you at a state of equilibrium in any facet, you automatically have power over whatever you're trying to participate in, right? But getting back to the point, you know, the earth, you know what I'm saying? So so getting back to the point, my, my point is that when you when you're doing all this behind closed doors and you're not actually putting your work out into the world, you lack the actual substance, the rejection energy. You you lack the the substance to actually know and, and feel confident and maintain a position. If you don't go through the 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 the, uh, the process, right? Trust the process. That's the key right now. Trust the process. But if you don't go through the process of getting rejected, you don't go to the process of of actually putting your work out there and just letting letting whoever react and respond to it and give you the feedback. You would never know how to maintain a position because even if you do get rejected by every single person that hears your music or sees your art, if you get rejected by every single person, right? What happens is, though, if you're strong enough as a spirit, you'll be able to take all that information and sight through it. Sit back and sight through it because then it comes into that second part I was talking about where you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Do you want to agree and adjust? Everyone is telling me that they don't like the way my music sounds. They, I, I think, you know, a lot of people saying they don't like the beat. So here's you. Look, you got a choice. You can either keep going with the beat, say fuck them, because you that's your right as a spirit. And that, that and, and the thing is, there's no right or wrong. You ch you choose what you what you do. Excuse me. Uh, talking too fast. But you choose what you can do. <laughs> you choose what you can do. You can either choose to be like, man, fuck them. I'm just, I like these beats. I'm going to keep going with that shit. And that's fine. Or you could say, ah, damn, okay, they saying my beats is whack. All right, all right. Well, you know, I wasn't so much married to those beats anyway. Let me see if there's other beats I can hump on and maybe I can come up with a new sound. Two sides, two decisions. But both of those are proactive or can be proactive. See, it's like this balance, like a, like duality, duality everywhere. But there's a balance between being reactionary and being proactive. Now, it's like being reactionary is kind of like being on a negative end because it's like you, 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 that's being too reliant on the public to give you where to go. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you need to know where the public consistency is at so that you know how you can incorporate yourself within the public arena, how to broadcast yourself and things of that nature. But knowing your energies naturally, you'll already know how to navigate. And you probably won't even have to go through as many trials and tribulations as someone who doesn't really quite know themselves. So they don't know the energy that they present. They don't know the energy that they push off. And therefore, they don't really know. It's like if you know that your tone is aggressive, you know you if you know yourself, you have a better understanding of when to play that out and when to maybe be like, all right, let me let me chill. Let me just stick quietly, because if I do speak, I'm going to be mad aggressive. So I know I come off aggressive. This person looks like they're going through something that's like they're like very sensitive. And I, I actually respect this person. I don't want to fuck up. The, let me let me let me just chill out or I'm hella aggressive. I know that I'm aggressive. I'm in a business meeting. The situation and circumstance is actually going in my favor, but I'm hearing certain things I don't like. But, you know, still things are up in the air. Maybe I shouldn't prejudge. Let me, ch you know, that's just a matter of knowing yourself, knowing your own energy. So you know how to how to percentage, how to, what percentage to actually play out yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because you always want to be yourself. But knowing yourself allows you the access to actually have that extra piece, that extra um gear, I want to say, to know when to when to hit the brakes and when to hit the acceleration, you know what I'm saying? But getting back to my point, so all the, you know, it, it really all comes down to knowing yourself. And so going back to creating your own work and release schedule, you know, or this is like six house stuff too as well, you know what I'm saying? Understand what energy you have in that six house space so that you know how you even get down with schedules. You might have Pisces in the six house. You don't get down with schedules. In fact, it probably would be better if you, schedule your life in a way or work in a way where you don't have a schedule and you could work around the schedule and it's like your daily routine is based upon more so built upon how you feel so in the beginning of your day you could sit back and maybe do something like meditate put meditation on on your schedule and then you can construct a way to where okay i meditated now i have clairvoyance 
I can tap into how I feel and based upon how I feel, now I can structure my day. But there's space in between for me to actually have that rest time that Pisces needs in order to recuperate and get my dreams straight. And then whenever I, and these are times I can relax and dream. These are times I actually need to get something done. I actually need to act on my dreams. You know, working with your with your sixth house like that. You know what I'm saying? And I still got to do that sixth house um, video with, with all the signs in the sixth house. You know, and that's going to be on the Patreon and stuff like that. And for the Patreon people, yeah, I got something for y'all, man. I got something for y'all. I know it's been a while. But anyway, getting back on point. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because if you don't have a proper, because the, the principle of the sixth house, too, is like, you know, it deals with that Virgo energy. Uh, which is like the nervous system, anxiety and things of that nature. But the only way, like me, I, I'm the, I'm this way too. You, you ever had a project that you know you got to finish, but you procrastinate, right? So you wait to the last minute and then you stress the fuck out of it. Like It's almost like, because sometimes this happened to me in school a lot, right? We'd have an essay due, right, in a month. And so... Everything's fine and dandy, right? But see, say the week, it, it, fine and dandy, you know, you're doing whatever. You're like, oh, I got a month to do it, right? But one week passed by, two weeks passed by, now we on the last week, right? And you ain't do nothing. You ain't even look at the assignment because, like, you know, life goes on. You got other shit going on, so you put that shit on the back burner, right? But because you didn't allot the necessary time to actually do it, It'll be on the back of your mind. But now in college, you already know. Like, And if you're not in college, I mean, you know, even in, like, you know, just kind of rock with me, right? Just kind of put your mind state in this. Imagine, like, well, in college, it's different. This college is like you got parties and things of that nature, right? So it's like, say you got that assignment due at the end of the week, right? It's the last week to do it. But you want to go out and have fun. You want to go out and party and shit like that. So you like, I mean, it's at the end of the week. But in the back of your mind, you know you got that shit to do. So you be out, and it's almost like you can't fully even enjoy yourself because you got all the work that you haven't been doing on your mind. So it's just kind of sitting there, and it's like, damn, like, you try to convince yourself that you're having fun, but you're not. It's the same principle with the sixth house as far as your dreams and, and, and things that you're working on. It's like... You have all these dreams, but if you're not actually putting them on some kind of schedule to get something done every day so that you can afford to actually do other shit in your life, you're going to feel you're going to stress yourself out about it. You're going to stress yourself out about everything that you that you haven't done. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like, you know, because that shit on the back of your mind, that's like going back to the work release schedule. You you didn't you're not doing anything to properly release that anxiety or that energy. You're not putting in physical work to exhaust that that chakra so that it can actually rest the way it's supposed to. If you not actually putting in the work, when you're not even when you try to rest, you're not going to be able to fully rest. When you try to enjoy yourself, you're not going to be fully able to enjoy yourself cuz it's going to be on the back of your mind. And that's the whole principle of creating a schedule for yourself because having a schedule makes it easier to not have to worry about every individual you know what I'm saying? It's like when you have a schedule, say you had that month and you say, okay, well, every two days I'm going to get a page done or I'm going to get a paragraph done, right? Now, if you do that every two days, you don't even have to really, you don't have to worry about the essay because it's going to get done regardless. And even if it's not done in the, say, you're, you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if, if it's not done in the, in, in the, in the month, right? It's like you, you do the two days thing every every day and you get to the last week, right? Even if you still got uh, another page or two to do, it's like it's a it's considerably less work to do than if you didn't start it at all. It's like you have something to work with. You're like, oh, I've been working with this all week. And slick, when it really comes down to it, you might even get into a certain groove to where you, you actually might, one of those nights you might say, well, fuck it. I'm going to actually get like four paragraphs done this night. And then you've already put yourself ahead. You know what I'm saying? Or you might say, man, fuck it. I'm going to just knock it out. You know what I'm saying? You might be in that vibe. Because, you know, one thing about the sixth house, too, that practice, that practice, when they say practice makes perfect, it's like, I think that's uh, misleading. Because perfection is, you know, perfection is elusive. You know what I'm saying? I think practice makes, practice makes, pra practice makes preparation. Like, practice makes 
there's another word, precision. Like practice makes other things than, than perfect. Practice makes, you know, like it, it, it's like perfect in a sense, but it's per practice makes something else. You know what I'm saying? It's not perfection, but practice makes like precision. Like to where like if you practice something, you develop a certain muscle memory and it almost becomes effortless. Like, and then when the next time you do it, you can do it like precise, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Y'all might just be like, well, just say perfection. But I, I don't know. It's like perfection to me, though, is a weird, weird concept because it makes you think that, you know what I'm saying, it exists. It, uh, perfection only exists between, you know, I, I don't want to get too too confused. You know what I'm saying? Go off on too far of a detour. But my point is just like practice makes other things than perfect. Practice makes um, practice makes other things than perfect. You know what I'm saying? But it, all those things that it makes, is it helps you. Because it, that routine and pattern and things of that nature becomes second nature. And then it becomes a situation where now when you go to present, you don't have to worry about it. Because you done, you done rehearsed it a thousand times. You know what I'm saying? And that might be perfection to you. But you know what I'm saying? I feel like sometimes people strive for, for, for perfection but miss the point of, you know, the sixth house entirely. Where it's not really even about perfection. It's about practice and and routine and precision and, and you know the details and things of that nature you know and being precise is just being able to know the exact thing to like you, you know what i'm saying it's like the right thing at the right time and you know scheduling time and things of that nature is like everything has a time and place everything has a a purpose you know but yeah let, let's keep on going you know what i'm saying so um yeah so the other thing let me see what what, what was the first note i had yeah, so the, like, let's get into the, the the meat and potatoes, right? Like the final the, the the final course, the main course. You know what I'm saying? So treat your project like a ritual. So, like I was saying, all about the career. So your career is not just one instant. It's not just one job. Your career is a span of jobs, a span of jobs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Your your career isn't just that one job that you do. I mean, it could be that one thing you're known for, but. I feel like we're going into a different era right now where, especially if you do something like art, your career can be a, it's a span of jobs. A job is like a singular thing that you're doing just to get from point A to point B. But the whole journey from point A to point B to point C to point D, that, that whole journey is your life, your career though. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times people really don't want jobs and, and when they say career they really mean like legacy they really mean their life's work as far as a career you know what i'm saying like thinking of a job that that that's fine but that 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 narrows your idea of your life's work down to one little function you know what i'm saying like that's why I, i'll be saying don't confine your your career to just one job like what do you want to do as far as your career like you know what I'm saying? What what's the what's your life? And this goes into your, your purpose and things of that nature. And you don't have to tie your purpose to a job either. You know what I'm saying? But when we look at life and things of that nature, you know, they told you that a career was only a job. But in reality, when we talk about the 10th house, like when we even though I bring up astrology a lot, it's really about life. And so when, we, when you talk about your career and your status and what you're known for, this goes beyond the job you do for real or the, the career you choose. But, you know, when I say career in that context, I'm just talking about the job that you chose to do in this world. But what if you created a career that was more so centered around your life's work and purpose? I feel like that's more so what is supposed to be happening because, you know, these jobs and things like that, these, these are all man-made. You know, before we had actual jobs, we just had our life's work, what we were working on throughout our whole life. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a concept I, I, I want to present, you know, and treat your project like a ritual. Whatever you choose to do as far as these projects. Right. So if you're an artist, the, everything you work on, make it mean something because this is an add on to your career. So even if you just wanted to do something for fun, understand how it fits within the whole grand scheme of your career. And so that I said a piece of a piece of you that you have shed and laid as a brick for others. So that's like your life's work. So 
basically it's like and, and that's the, that goes back to the point I made in the very beginning where we all here to relate. And that's the whole reason why we even put ourselves on a pedestal or on a mountaintop to broadcast what we've experienced. Because by the time we get to the to tenth house space, we we just left the ninth house. In a sense, the ninth house is like us, you know, the ninth house is like Sagittarius energy, the, the broad philosophical points of views of the world, spirituality and God, right? But by the ninth house, in a sense, it's us actually, the ninth house deals with experiences, but by the time we reach the ninth house, we've gone through all sorts of experiences to now we have the 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 vision, the wisdom to concise all of that information and actually make it something that we can teach or preach to other people. With that information and that, that wisdom and knowledge and things of that nature, we take that into the 10th house and it becomes what we can display as far as a, 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 almost like a showcase for our life's work, our career status and what we're known for. Because we then took all of our experiences from the 9th house and now we've condensed it and structured it into something that can actually be what Saturn is, a brick, something to stand on, something physical, something to, something to work with, you know, something to use. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you use the energy in the right way. You know what I'm saying? Because Capricorn is like the I use energy. But, you know, the negative side of that is trying to use everybody else. It's like, no, you should use what you built. You know what I'm saying? And if you built something that other people want to be a part of, then you can, you know what I'm saying? But use, you shouldn't use people. But if you, you it's, like, it's almost like you use what you built as far as a, a, a business or whatever it is. You use that. To work with people or work through people and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 like small psychological things that we, you know what I'm saying, we 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 miss, but like just you gotta get gotta get in between the lines, you know what I'm saying? But real shit. So treating your project like a ritual, like I said, when you create a work release schedule, all the ritual is is a set time to do something. And Set time to do something and you do it over and over again. And what you do is esoterically and spiritually speaking, you build up power and energy in that ritual. And, and see, spiritually, we don't really like patterns and routine and being constricted to that. But having discipline and understanding when to be in a, a routine and pattern and how to be in a routine and pattern that best suits you, this builds up momentum for whatever you're working on. Because what it does is that that ritual, depending on what energy you put into that ritual, that's the energy you get to build upon. So say you trying to build a, um, a multimedia, uh, I said a multimedia, I mean a multi-million dollar company, whatever it is, whatever you, or your, whatever your career is. In a lot of ways, the sixth house is about rituals, rituals to help you get to your 10th house space. So whatever you choose to do, say you say you wanna you wanna be a millionaire or you just wanna make music as your career, you gotta treat this whatever projects you're working on as that ritual. So the ritual would be whatever you're doing in that six house space, aka going to the studio, writing songs, making <coughs> making beats. Hold on. I need some water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we back. <laughs> Wave. Okay, we back. <laughs> Wave. I just need a little, little water. You know what I'm saying? Saying, no. but getting back. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing in that six house space, that that's the ritual that you're doing. So going to the studio, writing songs, making beats, listening to beats, hearing other people's songs. All these things partake, partake in that ritual you're using, aka that six house space, to get you to the tenth house. So it's like, boom. And so, but your projects, a lot of people see, I said in the other video, and this is just something I've been noticing and I'm getting sick and tired of, but at the same time, I know me and Soul Group, we here to change this. There's a supreme lack of quality. Motherfuckers ain't putting in the time and work to craft something worthwhile, worth a while. They just putting out shit to be listened to for one instant and thrown away for the next. Now, we all working for this. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I mean, like, you know, y'all might listen to my shit and be like, oh, this is something I just want to listen to one time. But it's not, it, 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 like I said, 
The career is a lifelong span, for real. It's your life's work. So, in a sense, the little mixtapes I'm dropping now, and I'm saying little, and I that's that's blasphemy for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talking down on my own shit. I don't mean it like little, little. Like, no, I, I mean as in the grand scheme of what I'm actually trying to build here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 not, I'm not downplaying my own shit. I'm talking about in the grand scheme of what I'm building here. It's like, I'm dropping these albums and these mixtapes and things of that nature, but it's almost like I, I consider them the, the, this part of the ritual because at the end of my life, you'll be able to take all those things that I've done and align them and be like, well, damn, these were actually moments in his life. And now at the end of it all, we can actually say this was his career. This was his lifespan. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to get too, um, I don't want to get y'all too fixated or confused with trying to equate your life to just what you're working on. Cause like life is more than what you're just working on. But ultimately our purpose down here, you know what I'm saying? While we down here, we, we got to do something. You know what I'm saying? You got to do something while you down here. You know what I'm saying? And and, you know, if you don't know what you want to do, you haven't found your purpose, the, the, the government will give you one, a.k.a. put you on a nine to five and things of that nature. And like, you know, ain't nothing wrong with a nine to five. But if you actually have a dream and you actually have an imagination that you actually want to see real in this lifetime, you should be getting up and doing it. And right now is the perfect time, because like I said, not only is there a lack of quality. But, like, you know, space is wide open for you to be the next new thing. And, like, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you probably should, shouldn't should even have the idea of trying to be the next new thing. You should just be you. And by default, you're going to be the next hottest thing. Because right now, nobody knows who they are. And everybody's kind of scrambling for, for the top. And, like, if you look on social media, that's all it is. Twitter, all that shit. All it, all it is is a bunch of people lying to themselves, wanting to be cool, wanting to be what they see on TV, wanting to jealous of others, wanting to make their life seem a lot better than it is, speaking about their life in a high way, but not actually putting in the physical work to actually get there or do something with their life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you are in the trenches right now, you know what I'm saying? You know, this is that time. So treat your project like a ritual. So break that ritual down. When you go to the studio, how do you like to set the mood? How do you like to set things up? What kind of beats do you really like? Stop trying to hop on what everybody else is rapping to. Why don't you get in there and make some new shit ain't nobody ever heard? You know what I'm saying? And it might, it, it's going to take you through that rejection and shit like that. People might not get it. But when the, the people who find it, who do get it, that becomes your new audience. And you can grow that shit and grow that shit and grow that shit and who knows? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I spoke about a lot of different things. But it's all, you know, pertaining to just, you know treasuring, trusting the process. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's what it boils down to. Trusting the process. Trusting your process. Don't trust what everybody else said is the way to get to the top. And stop trying to get to the top. Get to where you're supposed to be. And you, where you at is where you're supposed to be at the time. But whatever dream and imagination you've seen yourself in, position you've seen yourself in, work where you at and then make that shit where your position is. You, some, like, I'm starting to see, like, it's not even so much about trying to get somewhere. You got to see where you at and say, well, fuck, I'm going to actually make this my position and attract the things that, like, attract. Y'all get what I'm saying? Hopefully y'all get what I'm saying. It's like, instead of trying to chase a position, trying to get, oh, that's the position I'm trying to get. It. It's like, maybe the key is to look around and say, okay, okay, this is what I'm working with. All right. Boom. I'm, I'm, boom, I'm building here. I'm building here. This is where I want to lay my bricks. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden, now it's like you turn this barren wasteland into a fortress, a, a, a blooming society, an oasis, a, 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 a forest or something like that. You planted, a, you planted seeds and you let those trees grow and now you got an a, a oasis. You, you even found a little, you dug a little deeper and you found a little pocket where water can flow through and now you got a little pond. Now it's like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we got to start looking at life as if we can touch the ground, touch the water and turn it into wine as we can touch the, touch the walls and, or touch the ground and make 
flowers grow from the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to take our power back in that sense where we realize that how, how strong we are as spirits. You know what I'm saying? We don't got to chase shit. Stop chasing everything. Cause you, a lot of times, nine times out of 10, you chasing a position you seen that look good. Cause somebody else was in it, but that just leads you down to competing. And like you end up competing with others or thinking you competing with others, but you really just downplaying yourself. AKA you looking at what everybody else got. And so you, you, you like, basically you talking to your higher self, like, come on, man, come on. Like, what? come on, bitch. Like, come on, man, you ain't doing shit. Come on, we gotta, we gotta get hustling. Come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? You basically, you nagging your higher self. Like, come on, man, your bitch ass. Like, but you talking nasty to your higher self. Like, come on, your bitch ass never on time. Like, come on. You see all them doing they, they cool shit. You see them putting out they work. Come on. Come on, bitch. You, you bitch made. Come on, you ain't shit. Come on. You know, this, <laughs> like, this be really the inner talk that we have, and it be subconscious. You might be thinking, like, I don't talk to myself like that, but then you go scroll on Twitter and look at a bunch of people that you, that you, oh, I want to be there. I wish I could be there. Oh, I'm praying for, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, no, you gotta you gotta respect your higher self, bro. Cause your higher self is you. So you ain't doing shit. When you look at everybody else and, and what they and you start lusting after their position, you're not doing nothing but cussing out your, your own higher self. So, you know, you gotta be the source. That's what it comes down to as well. You gotta be the source. And part of being the source is building up energy. And part of building up energy is developing your own rituals. How do you write music? What process works for you to write music? What process do you feel the best <coughs> writing music in? Or what process do you use that you find that you make the best music? You know, and the better you know yourself, the better you can understand what kind of rituals you want to develop for yourself. And the better rituals you have, the better, the faster and the stronger you can build up energy. And the better you can build up energy, the more influence you can have or the more impact your projects will have. The, your, the, you know what I'm saying? They, they, and everything is expanding and contraction. So, yeah, the first album I made, a few people fucked with it. Next album I made, a, a lot more people fucked with it. Little mix, mixtape I dropped, more and more people. You know, and it's like this expansion and contraction. Expansion and contraction. But you got to be willing to expand. And expansion hurts. You know what I'm saying? Growth hurts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, treat your shit like a ritual. Hopefully this was um helpful to all my all my creators and stuff like that. All my creators, all my entrepreneurs, all my people. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all, like for real. And like this this the time. This the time. You know what I'm saying? Cause like the way it's looking, man, like, you know, you gotta understand how this shit work. You know, we never gonna have enough another, another time like this. You know? And like I did want to speak real quick. Like, if you did see, um, you know, Dolo's video uh, live live stream about uh, seasons and things of that nature, and uh, the, you know how the planets is going through certain seasons. You know how the, like the basically it's saying that you know you have a springtime. So based upon your ascendant, right, those first three would be your springtime, and then the next three would be your summertime, and then the next three would be your fall. And then the last three would be your winter, right? But, you know, in these, are, so when the planets are going through these, based upon where the planet, what planet is in this phase, that's what you're actually supposed to do. So, you know, in the spring, you plant seeds, you spark new shit. In the summertime, you actually experience, you get out and share whatever you're doing. In the fall time, you start to collect your resources and start to see what you need to let go of. And then in the winter, you let go of whatever you need to let go, aka death, transformation, and things of that nature. But, you know, it occurred to me that, we have generational planets, planets that stay in certain areas for a long period of time. So some of some of us have our Pluto in a position, like in 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 basically certain transits. I believe only have maybe one or two cycles. Now the moon moves fast, so we have many every every month. We go through a birth, life, death, birth, life, fall, and death. You know what I'm saying? We go through that cycle immediately. So our emotional that the moon is our emotional connection that goes through a life cycle very quickly but generational planets go through very slowly so for saturn for instance like you get maybe what two or maybe maybe three i think saturn returns throughout your whole life you know what i'm saying and like i don't know i, I don't know like I, I brought that up just because i was thinking about it like you know what i'm saying so when you think about 
you know, your life's work and things of that nature, like this lifetime and things of that nature, like certain planets, like, go through transits a lot. I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up, but to be honest with you, but I was just thinking about it. You know, it's just a concept just to, to say, like, damn, like, you know, there's really, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I had a topic and shit like that, that that I could go on, but like that that's all I really wanted to say is just to say, yo, the generational planets go through these very it's you only get a few transits out of these. You know what I'm saying? Like Pluto, let me think. Like you might not even live through your Pluto roots. Like I don't even, that I don't even think that exists for real. You know what I'm saying? I you know certain things. So it's like it's it's something to consider that like the time in which you chose to be born is important and your life's work it's important. It's for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So stop selling yourself short. Get up and do what you got to do. Understand where your energies is at. Understand where you at, who you are, and do what the fuck you came here to do. None of this shit is like, none of this shit is for free. Like, being down here is 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 about suffering, but learning how to build through the suffering and understanding that, okay, my desires led me here separating from the right desires and, and, and connecting, you know what I'm saying, separating from the wrong desires and connecting to the shit that truly resonates with you so that you can build something else out, outside of this life, like, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, I, I could talk on forever about this kind of shit, man, but anyway, much love, I appreciate y'all, man, and yeah, we gonna keep it coming, man, like, you know what I'm saying, this, this time period, bro, it's, it's on, that's all I can say, it's on, um, like I said, yo, get at me if you, if you are working on something, you got, you know, some kind of talent you're working with, um, if you're an entrepreneur and you, you, you're trying to set things up for your business and you want to get a natal reading as well as a creative consultation, so now you can take your internal energies and figure out how to actually structure whatever it is that you got as far as a talent or gift or whatever you have to offer to the world, just get at me, you know what I'm saying, I'm doing a half-off sale for creative consultations at, um, you know what I'm saying, all throughout Aquarius season right before we get into Pisces season and things of that nature. So, you know what I'm saying? We about to hit, uh, once we hit Pisces season, it's going to be dream time. And then Aries season is going to be go time. So, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I hope everyone is just kind of staying strong. You know what I'm saying? Staying strong. Because right now, things is cold. You know what I'm saying? Shit is cold. People, emotional, temperament, everybody cold right now. But, you know what I'm saying? This is like, this is, this is a beautiful time. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful time for just kind of getting your shit together. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to need it for when, you know, the sun hit Aries and, you know, it's time to go. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be very soon in this month. So, you know, anyway, anyway, man, there you go. Much love. I, like I said, I, I could sit here and talk forever. But anyway, I'm going to get off. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, you know, get, email me at daybeyond95 at gmail.com if you're interested in a creative consultation and we can get it popping. You know what I'm saying? Uh, also do general natal readings and things of that nature. And so, you know, if you want just a regular natal reading, I could do that too. So just email me and uh, or hit me up on IG, you know what I'm saying? Go follow uh, Millview Media, you know what I'm saying? Go subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Because we doing a lot of new things, a lot of cool things, you know what I'm saying? And like the the rebranding period around, well, I ain't going to get into that, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, peace out. Love y'all.